Hey everybody, so I'm still going through this little cold. Uh, still wanted to post a video, just I might not do three a day, you might get one a day. Uh, the other thing you might notice looking at this problem is, hey, we were at like question 16, why are we on question 35 now? Um, I plan on going back and doing the other videos for vectors. Uh, I think it's a section on space and time just getting bored working through vectors to be honest with you so i wanted to work a little bit with some of newton's laws of motion i did do videos on those on the uh, lecture playlist so there's no reason why we can't cover this um like i said i plan on going back and doing every problem in the book but just for sanity reasons i figured let's do something a little more exciting uh, so okay let's get into it a golf ball is hit from ground level with a speed v naught, in a direction that's due east. It's just going east. At an angle theta above the horizon. Neglecting air resistance, use Newton's second law to find the position as a function of time using coordinates with x measured east, y north, z vertically up. Find the time for the golf ball to return to the ground and how far it travels in that time. Okay, so we have, we have, I wish I had a picture, but I'll just draw one, I guess. Bear with me. We have a little golf ball. I guess that's what golf balls look like. And it's going to be, it's going to have a velocity V naught at an angle theta above the horizontal. And we're letting, so the way we want to think of this is, I'll do it over here actually. If we think of northwest, east, and south, that's kind of like this section. This portion is just up and down, and that's the Z. So it's kind of awkwardly worded, but it's saying Z is up and down, and then X and Y are your north, south, or your northeast, and then obviously your south and your west. Okay, so what we're looking for, first off, is we want position as a function of x, y, and z. Okay, well, let's think of this. Let's take the easy one first, y. Now, y is y, the easy one. Well, it's hit due east, and y represents how your north and your south. If it's hit due east, that means it's going just east. So that means, since it's not going north or south, we can say y is equal to zero. Well, that was pretty easy. Can we get x? Well, let's look at this triangle a little bit more. So we have v naught, theta, and this section here is v naught sine of theta and this section here is v naught cosine theta now what does v naught sine theta represent that's this portion of our triangle and that's telling you vertically how high up you are well the the letter we're using to represent how vertical it uh, uh it is is z so this is equal to v naught in the z direction. And this is v naught in the x direction. Okay? Where x is east. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so we have these, these things. Is there acceleration? Let me get my, there we go. Is there 
acceleration and the X direction. Well, to answer that, is there any force? Trying to relate this back to Newton's second law. This is even going back to your first semester in physics. Force in the X direction is equal to mass times acceleration in the X direction. If we think about our golf ball, what forces are acting on it? Is there any force in the X direction? No, there's not. There's gravity, but that's in the Y direction. So there's no acceleration. So because of that, X as a function of time is going to be equal to V naught in the X direction times time, right? That's just distance equals rate times time. That's all that is. Well, we know what, we know what this is. V naught in the X direction is just V naught cosine theta. So simplifying this a little bit more, substituting in, x as a function of time is v naught cosine theta times time. So okay, this guy takes care of this, and we already know why, so now that leaves us with just z. Okay, so if we think of Z, is there any, what is the force, uh, what is the acceleration in the Z direction? Acceleration, or let's just do it like this. Acceleration in the Z direction. Well, the acceleration in the Z direction is just G, it's the force of gravity which is a constant. It doesn't change. So, because of that, because it's a constant, we can say that z as a function of time is equal to v naught in the z direction times time minus one half g t squared. It's just our kinematics equation. Now, we know what v naught in the z direction is. That is just this. So we can replace this and say z as a function of time is v naught times sine of theta times time minus 1 half g t squared, where g is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, so real quick, I'm gonna blow my nose. Uh, now you guys know that I'm actually sick. And this takes care of the Z part. So awesome, good job. We found that R, as just a function of time, is equal to V naught cosine of theta times time, this was our X, zero, that was our Y because the ball's going just due east, and then V naught sine of theta times time minus one half G squared, where this is your z. So okay, we, we have our function, this will tell us our position at any time t. And then the next part of the question says, uh, the time for it to return to the ground. So we want to find time when ball hits ground.
Well, which function or which uh, coordinate are we interested in if we're thinking about height? Well, that's Z, right? Z represents how high off the ground our, um, the, the ball is. So if it hits the ground, what is the height? Just zero. So we can substitute zero in for Z of T. Uh, should be a T there. We can divide both sides by a T. And we get one half G T equals V naught sine of theta or t equals 2 v naught sine of theta divided by g. Probably something you've done in your first year physics. Um, I'm going to call this t ground. Uh, we've already used a g. Let's do t F for floor, I guess. So this is the time for it to hit the floor. Now that we have this, it asks how far did the ball go? How far did it travel? Well, Z represents how high up it is. X represents how far east it goes. So to find that, we do x as a function of t floor. Well, x as a function of time, we said was what? Just v naught cosine of theta times time. So the only difference here is we replace t with t floor. Which T floor we said, V naught cosine theta, was just all of this stuff. So times 2 V naught sine of theta divided by G, or X equals 2 V naught squared times cosine of theta times sine of theta divided all by g and this is a trig identity right here so cosine of theta times sine of theta is equal to sine 2 theta Hopefully you guys remember that from trig. If not, there you go. So simplifying that, we can say x equals 2 v naught squared times sine of 2 theta divided all by g. And you may say, hey, that looks really familiar. Well, it should because this is the Reins equation. The Reins equation and essentially that's what we just showed is um, if you're dealing with a situation where we can uh, we're basically doing kinematics if you want to find how far something goes you just do two times your initial velocity squared times sine of your angle times two divided by G and that'll tell you how far it goes so pretty fun, pretty easy, and uh, yeah, there we go. Hope it